everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about this weird push that Etsy has been doing lately about pricing and putting things on sale and list a new thing and put it on sale right away. And that's illegal. But it's just, it seems to be coming to a head now with this new pricing tool that they've started rolling out. I'm going to take you into that. We're going to look at that. So the first thing that showed up this week after, you know, they, they've been doing this, we're going to send messages to customers through your messaging system. So it looks like it comes from your shop and we're going to send your coupons to them. And I did another video about that. I've turned off all of my discounts because of this, because I don't want Etsy inundating people with unasked for messages that look like it comes from me. It's irritating. So, you know, people have enough stuff to deal with without extra messages. But the thing that showed up this week for some people, now I have not seen this in my shop because I don't usually put things on sale, but I do have a discount code that goes out for people on my email list. So I would think that I would see this eventually. I haven't seen it yet. This showed up in one of our member shops and it basically says in the previous 365 days, this is the data from the past year, you have earned, you know, X amount and it's different for everybody because they're using whatever listing they're suggesting to show you this. And they're basically telling you that you earned this much with a sale. So if this item was on sale in that amount of time, then that's what they're using. But then they're telling you, raise your prices X amount to, to cover that cost. Now, honestly, if you have your prices set correctly, you've already taken that cost into account. And if you don't have your prices set correctly and you think, oh, I need to raise my prices, then you probably need to go and look at all your prices, okay? And another thing that Etsy has done just yesterday, I saw they released this ultimate guide to pricing. And I will say that there's one piece of that article that says, take all of your expenses into account. And I think that's really important. I have a pricing guide that I sell. You don't have to buy it, but you do need to take all of your expenses into account. And that includes things like gas to go to the store to buy your supplies or the cost of your insurance, which you should have or the cost of your business licenses if you have to pay for one. Every single thing that goes into your business needs to be factored into the cost of your products. And a lot of people don't do that. They just use this stupid formula of, you know, cost of your materials times two. That's wholesale times, you know, that's a terrible formula. You'll go broke. You'll be earning less than minimum wage. Don't do it. So basically, you know, if you know that that's a terrible formula, all of this information is probably not going to help you. And if Etsy sends you this thing that says, raise your prices or list a new thing and put it on sale right away. And like I said, that's illegal, but that is a message that Etsy has been putting. Clearly the emphasis that Etsy is pushing right now is on pricing. And in the last few investor presentations, they have said, we are going to be helping Etsy sellers price their products appropriately. Okay, now that's a very loaded term. The way that Etsy seems to be doing this is not based on that. Just take all of these things with a grain of salt. And if you look at this and say, yeah, I need to raise my prices, don't do that so quickly. You need to figure this out for yourself. I, I think that the, the constant nudges and reminders that they're sending us, you have to think, why is Etsy doing this? And the reason is that they are trying to make money. Anything that Etsy does, it's not to help us. It's not to help us price things appropriately. It's to get us to sell more stuff so that they make more money. That's their goal as a business. And you have to look at everything that they do through that lens. And if you do that, then you'll kind of understand the motivation behind this. The motivation is that if you raise your price for these sale items to cover your costs, you're just actually giving them more fees, right? They see something that's selling well, that's on sale, they're saying, okay, if we target that listing and we tell this seller that they need to raise their prices, maybe they will, and that gets us more fees. So that's that's basically the reason that they do this. And like I said, if you're pricing things the right way to begin with, you can raise your prices if you want to, but there's really no reason to, and there's no reason to take Etsy's word for this because they don't know what goes into your products. But if you want to look at it and say, maybe you do want to raise your prices, that's fine. But don't be afraid if you get something like this and think it's time to raise all my prices. No, maybe it's not. So anyway, that's the first thing. Now, the second thing that they've rolled out, oh my God, is this pricing tool, which is insane because I'm going to take you into my shop dashboard. Now, this is showing up in the listing manager. And apparently when you're listing new, when you're creating a new listing, it's showing up for people. When you're in your listings manager, which would be 
listings here in your shop dashboard. Now, this is not on the app. I didn't see it on the app. They are rolling it out. So I'm not sure if they can even put this on the app. There's a lot of information here, but it might show up. But at this point, they're rolling it out on the desktop. You may or may not have it. But when you go into your listings manager, this is the normal tab. But then this shows up, optimize prices in beta. So that's important. They're testing this out. It could change. All right. So this says, looks like some of your listings are priced lower or higher than similar items. Use these insights to help make smart pricing decisions. You know your business best and you always set your own prices. Now they have to put that in because then they can't be accused of price fixing, right? Because if they're telling people, here's the median range, then they're expecting everybody to go in here and then they could be accused of telling people what to charge for products and that's illegal. So, you know, it's true, you know your own products best, but in that case, why are they even doing this? All right, so let's click on about this tool because this is a beta tool, it can change. And this says, this is a new tool that we're still testing out. So we're showing a limited selection of your items with prices that are lower or higher than the median range. This may not include every item in your shop that falls, falls outside of the median range. So they're probably gonna add more things to this down the road. They're testing it out now. And then when they get feedback from people, they will, roll it out to everything. And I have heard people say that when you're listing a new item, this shows up. This says, we're just sharing some of what we know about how similar items are priced. You know your business best, you should always set your own prices. That's the CYA language, which is cover your butt. Consider taking into account the costs and time that go into making and selling your unique. Don't consider it, you need to do that. You need to take all of your costs into account. And I would go into this ultimate guide to pricing. If you wanna get my pricing guide, I'll put a link in the description. You don't have to get that, but you do need to figure out a way to incorporate all of your costs into the price of the things that you make. That's how you run a business profitably. Don't consider it. Don't consider taking that into account. You need to take that into account. They're saying pricing data is based on listings with a similar category, comparable materials, and similar types of buyers. The data doesn't take into account item size or show if sellers have incorporated costs of shipping, production, or marketing into their prices. So basically, and I, I will show you how this first part is BS, okay? Because we're gonna go and look at this in, in what they're showing compared to mine, like comparing my stuff to. The data doesn't take into account any of this stuff. This is important and this is important for pricing. So basically they're saying, well, we're comparing similar things, but it doesn't give you all the information. So mm, it's useless. This tool is useless if they don't take all that into account. And if they're considering, if they're comparing to similar things, right? But it doesn't take into account item size or show of sellers of incorporated costs of shipping, production, or marketing. Production is materials, okay? So let's say I make bracelets and I use cheap plastic beads that cost 10 cents. And the person next to me makes bracelets also, and she uses pure emeralds, okay? Her costs are gonna be a little higher than mine. So if you're comparing my stuff to her stuff, because it's the same category, that's not a comparable, thing that you, I mean, you can't compare that. So I would take this whole thing with just a huge grain, take it with a full salt shaker, not just a grain of salt. And if you do see that every single thing of your, every single listing is low, then look to see what they're comparing it to, because we're, we are going to go into mine and I'll show you that is not really anything I'm worrying about. I looked at this yesterday and had a good laugh and then I moved on, but Let's talk about this. Okay, the median is a preferred way to take an average, which can be thrown off, or is preferred to taking an average. Yes, the average is the worst stat there is because like they say, if there's one thing that's really high or one thing that's really low, it can throw those, those numbers off. So the median is kind of the, the most. So instead of adding things together and then dividing, you're just looking at the quantity in the middle. But the interesting thing on here is how they are actually comparing. And like I said, you can't you can't take these suggestions seriously. You just can't. This says for this $12 for some edible butterflies. I recently changed the price of all of my wafer paper to $12. It was $16 with free shipping per item. However, all of my competition were charging lower prices and charging for shipping. So when you're in the Etsy search results, mine looked like they were higher, my prices, but the shipping was free. And by the time you add everything up, I was actually making less money per item. 
Okay. So what happened then is I decided just to lower my prices and start charging for shipping again. And I have the $35 free shipping guarantee turned on. So I do get that benefit of the shipping, whatever shipping, free shipping counts in the Etsy algorithm, I'm in that. But I don't have free shipping included in the price of the item anymore. So I'm actually making more money at $12 in profit because the customer is paying for shipping and it it might be a little bit more than $16 when they're through paying for it. So Etsy doesn't know that. Etsy's not comparing me to that. And they're telling me, that, I know this is just ridiculous. They're telling me that the median price is $21.90 to $24.21. That makes absolutely no sense with the competitive research that I know in this category, the prices are not that high. But it could be that they're comparing me to the wrong thing. So let's look. First, if you hover over this, it tells you low, okay? So the first thing, it looks like business cards or something. The second thing, it looks like, I don't even know what this, I mean, see, they don't tell you what these things are. You have to look at the pictures to figure it out. This looks like invitations or something. I have, this looks like a, a mask. This is a mat, like a face mask. Um, this is a cake topper that is like a physical cake topper that you would put in the cake. And these are just little edible butterflies. So it's wafer paper that you put on butterflies and stuff. And this looks like beads. I don't even know what this is. This has not, none of these things have anything to do with this item, okay? So let's look at the median price. Okay, median price. This looks like actual, I don't even know what these things are. This is, okay, this is gonna be a fake cupcake. People make fake cupcakes and use them for display. That's a fake cupcake. That looks kind of like the same thing, or it's these little cake toppers here that they're selling. This looks like something party related. These are all cupcakes, but they're not cupcake toppers. They're It looks like they're fake cupcakes. And I know one person in my group makes fake cakes and this kind of thing. So I know this exists. I have no idea what this is, but honestly, none of these are similar items. Okay, so now let's look at the high price because I, I have no, again, it's fake cupcakes. And it's probably more than one of them. So Etsy is looking at the keywords in this listing, which probably has cupcake topper in this listing somewhere. And they're looking at the colors, which are pastel. And they're saying these items are similar. No, they're not. Absolutely none of these are similar. So first is that you have to take a look at what they're actually comparing you to. This is the other one that I just thought was ridiculous. Okay, this little skull mold is $8. It is literally about this big. It's teeny, teeny, tiny. That's why it says little there. Okay. They're telling me that I'm charging way below the median of $23.80 and $26.31 for the same thing. They're looking at skull molds, like molds to make a skull. These actually, if you look on the low, these look like they're about the same size, but one of them is a flat thing. It's not that low. This one is $7.00. This one's $8.33. Those are cameos, but they're a skeleton cameo. So that's where they're getting the word skull. None of these really make me concerned that I'm not charging enough because it's not the same thing, all right? These are skull molds, but they're a lot larger. And silicone is not cheap. So when you get into these large molds, you start adding up the cost of the silicone and you have to charge more. So this has absolutely nothing to do with the size. And it says, remember, that there's not taking size into account. Okay, if I raise the price of this to $23 based on Etsy's suggestion, people would laugh at me. Customers would send me hate mail. It's ridiculous. Okay, so let's look at the high. Again, these are not that much higher than this. So they're probably just a little bit larger. And silicone is expensive. If you're actually making these yourself, it's pretty it's pretty pricey. This is not a good suggestion. And you really need to go in when you see this, don't say, oh my God, I should raise my price. There, people are charging. No, this actually, it's it's so small. It probably cost me, no, it, it cost me literally 40 cents to make this out of materials. So there's absolutely no reason that I could get away with doing $23.80 for this. The other one I wanted to show you is this. This tells me that I'm way too high, okay? And again, if we look at this, here's a little clamshell mold. These are teeny tiny. These are kind of average size. They're medium size. 
and this is mine and it says the highest price that they're showing is $12 or $21.50 for a set of two that are not the same thing this mold actually it cost me $9.60 in silicone to make i said silicone is not cheap and this is a two piece mold that makes a 3d clamshell so it has like the front and the back it cost me almost $10 just in silicone to make this. And that's buying it from the, the supplier, like directly from the people who make it, not even going through a wholesaler. When, when Etsy's telling me that the median price, which is down here is $9.71 to $10.74, and that I'm way too high, they're not taking anything into account. They're not taking any, the time that it takes to make this is longer because it's two pieces. The cost of the materials, it costs more to ship because it's heavier. No, I'm not taking Etsy suggestions. It's insane. So basically take this with a grain of salt, but you need to look to see what they are comparing it to because that will really help you make the decisions and it'll make you feel better if they're telling you you're not charging enough or you're charging way too much. So just please do not take this into like as gospel. Don't take this as gospel. You need to do your own investigation. If you have priced your products well and you know that you need to charge a certain amount because of this, that, or the other cost of materials, your overhead, all the things rolled in, don't worry about it too much. If you can take the opportunity to raise your prices a little, then do that. But you don't want to follow a formula or a suggestion from somebody that is not taking everything into account. And they say right there in the tool, we're not taking everything into account. The one other thing is that you can go in here and you can click save. Okay. Um, I guess if you want to change the price, you can do it right here. No, but you can click on this and either view the listing, skip this listing, and just say similar listings aren't accurate. If you just click this, it'll, I guess it'll just tell Etsy, it says, thanks for letting us know. We'll update our info and remove this comparison. I'm just going to click all of them because they're showing, it's just, it's ridiculous. But, you know, it's in beta. We'll see what happens. I just want people to be very careful taking business advice from people who don't know your business. And Etsy doesn't know your business. Etsy knows their business, which is to try to get people to price things appropriately so that they make more fees. Leave me any questions and I will talk to you later.